Thanks for joining us for our Give Education Day on-demand webinar all about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. My name is Sarah and I'm a project manager with Mighty Cause and we are the platform provider for Give Education Day. We're excited to be here with you all once again um, in presentation with Alumni Nations. So our agenda for today is to really cover the peer-to-peer -peer kind of overview on the platform, walk through some features and tools, explain what it is and why it's helpful to use during your campaign. Um, then we'll walk through some setup, We'll also offer some recruiting tips and different kind of strategies and ways to support those who do end up peer-to-peer fund -peer fundraising on your behalf. So a little bit about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, this is a really unique fundraising technique that is going to leverage your existing supporters, existing kind of donors, those who are really engaged with your school or organization um, that can help bring in new donors and donations during your campaign. So in a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, you are not directly asking for the donations. You are asking a supporter to set up a page, and then that supporter is going to kind of fill out the page, customize it, tell their own story, why they're engaged with your organization, and then they're going to share that page with their own, organ their own kind of circle, their social network, to ask for gifts um, to help support their fundraiser on your behalf. So benefits of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, definitely donor acquisition. So this is gonna help you just expand your reach, expand your donor base, um, giving you more access to people who might not necessarily be current donors. Maybe they you know, see a fundraising page from an alumni and they went to the school or you know, the organization during the same year, and then they see that they can make a gift. Um, that's going to just reach donors that maybe you haven't been able to connect with. Um, it expands your reach you're able to spread your word about your work, connect with individuals in other circles, you know, family and friends of these um, supporters, people who you don't necessarily otherwise have access to. You're also able to deepen relationships with the existing supporters and donors that you have to your organization. It really offers a fun and kind of exciting different way for them to show support for your cause. Um, and then especially during a giving event with a really limited amount of time to fundraise, um, a lot of organizations recruit their supporters to help them to just kind of amplify the outreach during that specific time period and help them raise more funds. So using peer-to-peer -peer fundraising on Give Education Day, um, you're going to ask your supporters to fundraise for you and help spread the word within their circle. Uh, the first things first, they're going to go to your organization page after you're registered and click the little fundraise button. If you don't see the fundraise button on your organization page, you can toggle it on. There's a little button next to the donate fundraise section, um, and you can optionally turn this option on or off. Um, and then once they click fundraise, our platform creation wizard kind of you know, we'll take them through setting up and getting their page published so that they can actively start to collect gifts once the um, early giving period begins. So after they go through that, they can customize their page, they can talk about their, you know, deeper connection with your organization or your school, kind of talk about what they might, you know, what value you bring, uh, and really kind of try to engage and give their pitch to why somebody should help support their fundraising peer to peer page like a really great use case for this would be you know an active or engaged alumni um, people who already maybe give to you and really care deeply about your cause that would be a really good group to ask to be a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser on your behalf during the giving event um, so after their page is set up they're going to want to set a goal and then they're going to start asking for donations as soon as early giving begins through the live event so this is kind of an example of what a page looks like and we'll go into it a little bit deeper to kind of show you a bit more in the setup but this is just kind of an example there's a donate button there's a space for a picture they can you know customize the, the heading for their fundraiser page offer a little you know snapshot of why they care why they want you know to be a part of it and then there's a giving activity feed. It's really a nice, just kind of engaging little mini page that fundraises on your behalf. Um, they'll use the URL to this page to reach out to their friends and their family, maybe add the link to you know, their Facebook to connect with others. Um, and they're gonna have the ability to have donations start to show up in the donation report and you'll have access to that as well. You'll be able to see all gifts that are coming in directly through your organization donation report. Um, and of course, all these gifts that come in do get dispersed directly to your organization. 
Um, and then any dollars and donors from their campaigns, you're going to see those reflected in your totals on your giving event um, on your organization page. So a couple just kind of, you know, high level FAQs that we see a lot of that come through on our support channel. Um, will the peer to peer fundraiser be able to see who donated to their page? Yes, they're going to have access to this information. Um, will you as the organization receive donor data for donations made through a peer to peer campaign? Yes. So just as I said, you'll have access to the donor data, the you know names of donors, um, how much they gave, you'll be able to see all of that within your own donation report. Um, can peer to peer fundraiser pages have a matching grant? Yes, absolutely. They can set one up. Um, so if they want to, you know, set if the supporter wants to set up a peer to peer page and then also set up a matching grant, um, they can do that. Uh, and then optionally, if you set up a peer to peer, sorry, if you set up a matching grant, uh, you can choose to have fundraiser pages also be able to take part of that matching grant. Um, so last FAQ, can peer to peer fundraiser pages add offline donations? Yes, they can as well. So if somebody, you know, wants to write them a check, they have a grandma who wants to give them, you know, an offline gift that they can add to their totals, they can totally log that and you'll also have access to do that as well. So a couple of things to remember when you're starting to think about how to utilize peer to peer fundraising. Um, or even if you're interested in doing it, the first thing that you have to do is ask people. So you can't, you know, just think that people will go to your page and click fundraise and want to start to do peer to peer fundraising. You'll want to kind of come up with a strategy for how to be successful, who you should ask. Um, a lot of supporters don't realize that they can even fundraise on your behalf during the giving event. So thinking about who would be a good group of people maybe to reach out to begin kind of, you know, testing the waters, seeing if they would be willing to put together a peer to peer page. Um, then you want to also set some goals for yourself. So how are you going to see peer to peer fundraising? How is that going to be useful to your campaign this year? Are you trying to, you know, increase the number of new donors to your organization or your school? Are you trying to you know, engage with some more of your, you know, regular supporters? Do you want to offer them another strategy for how they can become more involved? Are you looking to increase to a specific number of donations? These are all things to keep in mind as you kind of start to put together an idea and kind of track your progress for how peer to peer fundraising can be successful um, for you and your organization. So along the way, you'll be tracking that progress. You'll want to be reaching out to your supporters. You'll want to be checking in with them, making sure that they feel comfortable and confident. You know, how can they, once they set up their page, do they have the tools that they need to then communicate with their networks? So you'll want to come up with a plan, an email kind of campaign to let them know once you're set up, here's, you know, how to get started. Here's where you can, can, prom can promote your URL, um, Facebook, Instagram, just emails, maybe with friends and family type of deal. Um, keep track of what works well for you, maybe areas you can improve after the campaign is over and then take those ideas into the next year's event. Follow up is also going to be key. We have a lot of kind of reports to help you make follow up really easy. You can download your donor reports. Um, so follow up with new donors. If you're looking through at the end of the campaign and you see you have a handful of new donors, have a strategy in place to kind of onboard them, thank them, let them know how they can continue to be supporting, let them know where those dollars are going. If you are fundraising for something in particular, um, just being able to give kind of a concrete idea of like, here's where your funds have gone. We really appreciate what you've done. Thanks for donating to, you know, so-and-so's campaign this year to help support us. Um, and then also follow up with your supporters and your fundraisers. They're the ones that really put in a lot of the work and the effort to spread the word through their networks, send those emails to their family and friends. So you definitely want to come up with a strategy to thank them um, and hopefully, you know, follow up, get some feedback and see if there's any way that, you know, hopefully you can keep them in this kind of circle and then use, uh, you know, use their campaign pages next year as well. So a couple of peer to peer options um, on the platform, we have two different options uh, that will be most effective for you and those are going to be the individual fundraising page and the team fundraising page. 
Um, so individual fundraising pages, this is where a supporter is going to create a page that is connected to your organization and they use it towards fundraising towards their own goal. So maybe they have, you know, a birthday coming up that coincides, you know, with the giving event and they want to fundraise uh, and, you know, drive donations towards your campaign. Uh, that would be a really great use case for an individual fundraising page. Um, maybe, you know, there's a group of alumni who want to campaign. They can still use an individual fundraising page because they want to push all donations to the same place. Um, another page we have is the team fundraising page. This is going to be where a group of individual fundraising pages are going to work together to hit one larger team fundraising goal. So the team as the whole has the central page and then each of the individual members is going to have their own individual fundraising page. So it's kind of underneath that, you know, this is the top umbrella and then below that are the individual pages. So this is kind of what it looks like. So we have individual fundraisers created by a supporter or supporters to solicit donations from a family friends, inner circles, that type of deal. So this is going to be one page. This example is, you know, class of 1974. Um, they want all donations to go to this page that is supporting uh, class of 1974. Um, and then you can see that there is a team page. Um, in this case, case, we have 12th grade. So we have each of the individual students have a fundraising page. They, each individual student has set up an individual page like this on the left. And all of those are umbrellaed underneath the 12th grade team page. So all of their totals raised are going to be reflected in the group total on the team page. Um, a little bit about more about individual fundraisers. So we have, you know, a couple more examples. These are just really your, you know, bread and butter of peer to peer fundraising pretty much. This is going to be, for the most part, this is the page that everyone is going to be set up. Um, all donations are going to the same page. They're sharing this one URL, uh, Facebook, Instagram, emails, you know, texting it to friends. Um, this is going to help you reach a bunch of new supporters. Um, and it's really easy to set up. And part of the, you know, one of the great things about the Mighty Cause platform is that we help you, allow you to set up a fundraising template on your page. So that means you can go in and you can pre-fill, you know, a bunch of things like a heading or a goal, a dollar goal, or even adding the mission of your organization. Just, you can fill in a bunch of stuff, do lay the groundwork to make it easier for somebody to come in and then, you know, add whatever other content they want. They can add their own photos. They can, you know, swap out the goal if they feel like it's too high or too low. Um, but these are, this is pretty much the individual fundraiser is the one that you'll probably see most of. Um, so this is an example again, individual supporter, uh, Barb is fundraising for a school. Um, and then this is another example, individual fundraiser, um, a parent group is fundraising for a school. Team pages are kind of next level. If you've already experienced individual fundraising pages on the platform, you're very familiar and comfortable with them. Maybe you want to upgrade to a team page. This is going to involve a bit more communication because you're dealing with multiple people who are attached to the same team page. So it's made up of multiple individual fundraiser pages. The perk of a team page is that it's going to offer friendly competition. These pages allow you to have a leaderboard. You can see on the left, there's a leaderboard and it's going to track, you know, dollars raised. So it's exciting to see how everybody's dollars are coming together to support the joint cause. Um, you can invite members to support uh, and be a part of the team. So if you have a specific group you think you would, would do really well as a team, maybe you have a board uh, and you want them all to have their own pages, but you want them to be fundraising as a team, that's a good use case. You can set your team goal. Um, you can send emails, more use cases, football teams, um, you know, school grades. Maybe you have, you know, a group of maybe your office staff, maybe they all want to do a team page, but they all want to fundraise individually and share their own links. Uh, that would be the good route for them. Um, moving into peer-to-peer -peer tools and setup on the platform. So really easy to use. Um, once you're registered, you'll be able to log into your organization page. And on the left-hand dashboard, you'll see a button that says fundraising tools. 
click this to open up your campaigns dashboard and this is going to show um, all of the campaigns, the peer to peer fundraising campaigns that are set up benefiting your organization. So take a look. You can see a lot of information here, the owner of the page, whether it's an admin who set it up or a specific peer to peer supporter, you can get that data. Uh, you can see when it was created, when it was published. Some of these might be out of date, so it's a good idea just to go through, do a little housekeeping. You can click three buttons next to the campaign and you can hide that page. So toggle off that discoverability so it's not showing in the Give Education Day search if it doesn't need to. So take some time to go through and just make sure everything that is active you want to be searchable. If it's not wanting to be searchable, just hide it. This is where you'll also be able to access your fundraiser template, uh, which everybody gets one fundraiser template uh, for being a part of Give Education Day. So you can go here and you can start to customize an old template if you are a previous participant, or if you're new this year, you can set up a part, set up a new fundraiser template for your participants. Uh, but this is where you can go in and you can, you know, kind of streamline it, make it really easy for somebody to click fundraise. When they do click fundraise, they'll be asked, do they want to use the fundraiser template that you've set up? So this is just saving them a little bit of extra stuff. Um, you can, you know, add a photo. Maybe you want your logo to be the photo. Maybe you want everybody to start with a goal of 500 or 250, whatever you think is manageable. Um, but this is where you can start to kind of drop in that, that text, those images, just to make it easy and kind of welcoming for somebody who wants to fundraise on your behalf. Um, a little more into the fundraiser templates. It really takes the fear out of fundraising for somebody if they're new to peer to peer fundraising. It's always easier to start from a page that has some, you know, text and images added rather than trying to come up with it on their own. It can be a little overwhelming. So definitely take advantage of filling out the template. Um, and then if there's anything specific that you would really like to see on everybody's fundraising pages, maybe you really want to see your mission, maybe you really want to, you know, make sure every template this year, uh, every page has specifics about what you're fundraising for. Um, but again, your supporters can make it as customizable as they want. If they want to fundraise specifically for something, um, maybe just they feel very connected to your organization, they can always remove what you've added and just put their own kind of text. Um, from the supporters side, this is where they're going to go to start a fundraiser on your behalf. They'll go to your organization page and they'll click the fundraise button. Uh, this is that prompt that, you know, wizard that I was talking about where by clicking the button, it opens up the get started and then it prompts them, do you want to use the template provided by the organization? And most likely they're going to say yes, and then they'll click build their fundraiser. Um, when you are starting to solicit, ask if people want to fundraise on your behalf, it's really good to share this fundraise button directly as a link in your emails. So you can copy that fundraise button, right click it, copy URL, and then just directly share that link in your you know, social media posts when you're doing that initial call, letting people know that they can fundraise during Give Education Day, um, just to kind of take that step out of the equation. It's just click this button to get started fundraising. When you're thinking about peer-to-peer -peer recruiting um, and how you can help really support organizations, um, there's a lot of really great tools and resources one uh one we want to talk about is just when you start to kind of get into it really check out the mighty cause peer-to-peer ebook this is a good starting place um i have the link here but it's also available in the resources on the give education day site um, but flip through that book read about it see if it's something that you all want to do um, definitely start to you know strategize think about your goals really kind of keep in mind how peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is going to help you because that'll help get you in kind of the right track as far as who to ask how many people to ask um, kind of setting those goals early on is going to be helpful um, and then you're going to want to really think about identifying your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers and how you can ask them to start a campaign so i listed a couple Really great options as a starting point. If you have a board, those members are really great because they're already invested in your work. They're already invested in what you're doing. Um, 
parent-teacher organizations, groups of people who are already really invested in your work are going to be the first line of people who you're going to ask. Um, it'll be easy for them. They care. Uh, they have networks. Those are a good bunch. Program alumni are going to be really good, especially alumni who are really engaged with your program. Um, those are the ones that are going to really rally their other alumni and really probably have the networks that are still active and open to be sharing your pages with. And then, of course, if you have volunteers or any staff at your organization, those are a good group as well. Um, you'll also want to think about providing support. So start that kind of thought process early on. Uh, even before you make the ask, you're going to want to have some support set up so that they can start learning more about what it is. Well, what is peer to peer fundraising? I've never done it before. You're going to get those types of questions. So really coming up with like a quick FAQ, uh, you can email that FAQ to people who are interested in uh, fundraising on your behalf. Um, and then just sending direct links is also going to be really helpful. So direct links with the fundraise button, direct links with resources, direct links with templates they can use. So when somebody finishes setting up their peer to peer page, what are next steps? They're going to want to know, what do I do after I've set up my page? And you'll say, start promoting it, start asking people. Um, so coming up with those resources before getting everybody onboarded is going to be really key to their success um, and also just to their experience with fundraising for you. And with, we all know with good experiences, people want to return and they want to support you again. So laying that initial foundation and groundwork is going to be really helpful uh, in retaining your peer to peer fundraisers for the next event. And then, of course, you'll want to have a follow up plan in place with your supporters and with the additional maybe donors. Uh, a thank you message kind of thing. How are you going to follow up with those who fundraised for you? Maybe throw them a little celebration, a little party, uh, or even just a phone call, just, you know, being very grateful and thanking them. And then also being able to download that report and connect with those new donors and make sure that they have visibility and they're seen and appreciated as well. Um, additionally, we have some really great support library uh, aside from the peer to peer ebook, which, as I said, is a really great starting point, you should check out the Mighty Cause support.mightycause.com site. This has a bunch of FAQs regarding peer to peer fundraising. It breaks down even further uh, individual fundraising pages, team fundraising pages, and it also goes through in more depth uh, how to actually customize and make your page really awesome. We also have mightycause.com slash guide, which offers, you know, just a bunch of webinars, pre-recorded webinars and things that offer strategy and kind of go into further depth on peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. If you have any questions, if your supporters have questions, if your donors have questions, uh, have them reach out to support at mightycause.com. We're here to help you and help make sure your campaign is off to a great start. And then along the way, answer any questions that you might run into. So thanks for tuning in to our webinar. Um, if you have any questions, of course, reach out to our support team. Uh, we're excited to be partnering with you all for another awesome year of fundraising.